maybe you can look at some other ways to bet on this game. I was looking at some of the pitcher props, and again, both of these pitchers were rock solid the first time around, but I do think at least one of these pitchers is going to give up some runs. So the earned runs prop for both of these pitchers is one and a half. I say either Brandon Font or Ranger Suarez hits this number because I think it's probably more likely that Brandon Fott gets it because I think yeah. they'll let him ride until he gives up two runs. Uh, Cause that's the thing. One and a half is such a low number that even if he pitches a good game, you can still hit this earned runs prop. So I think you look at these teams and which team trusts their bullpen less. And I would say it's probably the dime back. So maybe I'll hit the over for Brandon Fott over one and a half earned runs for minus one thirty five. Ooh, I think I like that. I don't know. I'm I'm not good at playing these earned run props, and I feel like you've been exceptional at doing that. I'm so basic. I'm like, oh, I like the under. I like the money line here. But that's one of the smart things you can do with baseball that you're very effective at, which is going and saying, let's find a different way to play this. And that way, you're not laying so much juice on the line or you're not laying so much minus money, and you can find just different ways to either fade or back someone. So, yeah, I like that quite a bit. That or you could go the other way. If you think Ranger Suarez gives up uh, some runs here, his uh, earned runs prop is set at the same. It's one and a half, but the juice is a little less. You're paying only minus 110 for the over. It's actually juiced to the under. But again, I think if Ranger Suarez uh, is dealing, they keep him in long enough to surrender Mm -hmm. at least to earned runs. So I think both of those are pretty solid plays. Is there anything else that you think may be an X factor here? Like, I'm going to say this. I think the bottom line is, do the Mm -hmm. Phillies bats come to play in this one? Because when they are at their best, it doesn't seem to matter the starting pitcher. It doesn't seem to matter the Mm -hmm. closer, whoever. This team's lineup is talented enough to get hits off just about any pitcher. We just don't see it on a nightly basis. Like, I feel like Kyle Schwarber is like the calling card of the Phillies. He's either going to go like 0 for 5 or he's going to hit two <laughs> right. two home runs. Like he's not a for average hitter, but when he hits, he can completely change the complexion of a game. So uh, I don't remember what I was asking. Oh yeah, the X factor in this game. Is there anything else you think people should know? Well, I, what I would say is I don't, and this is not really the do theory, but when you talk about those Phillies bats, right? And you talk about Schwarber mm-hmm. and you talk about Turner and you talk about Harper, they went 0 for 9 last night. Nick Castellanos is, is 1 for what, 20 in this series? But look at those those three guys. Do I really think because they're so talented, there's a possibility of them going 0 for 9 again? No, I don't. And I understand a team can get cold, but it feels like to me the Phillies are just too talented top to bottom in that lineup for them to go cold again. And also, you talk about a a home field advantage, and I know we've discussed it a lot on this show. It will be a factor here. I don't know how you necessarily quantify that, but Philadelphia, Game 7, it's going to have a tangible effect in this game as well. So those are things that when you talk about, well, I think these hitters are too good to, to go hitless again or a home field advantage, you can't necessarily quantify those things, but they are things, I think, that work in Philly's favor. Can we talk about this game for just a quick second? The, sure. We, I guess we talked about it a little bit, but the Chargers laying eight and a half at home over Shh. the Bears. Do you think in any world the Chargers should be laying eight and a half points? No. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Thank God it's come down from nine and a half. I, I would take the Bears here. Bajan Palooza. Somebody come up with a better Bajan name than that Palooza. because that's that's not great. There's no, In what world should the Chargers be laying eight and a half points against anyone? And also, look, the Bears are the Bears, right? They're not going to want anything. But imagine the motivation or lack thereof for the Chargers. Here we are in week eight. Week eight of the NFL. There are already three games out of first place in the division. There's no way they imagine their season going this way. And this is a huge letdown spot because they just played Kansas City. Now they're welcoming the Bears. I'd be in Chicago here. Right. They almost made the cut for my teaser because if you put them in a teaser, you can get 14 and a half. I don't know, but it seems like almost too obvious because Mm -hmm. the first thing I do when I look at a slate is I try to see, okay, this is a trap game. This line seems too good to be true. Something is off. And I didn't see as many as we did last week because the two trap games last week were uh, the Lions getting three 
and the Dolphins getting two and a half. And you saw how those ended up. Uh, mm-hmm. Neither of those teams covered, not even in a teaser. All right, so let's get to my teaser teams. I can't remember if we have a sounder for this. I think we do. Something like a little game show. Oh! Ooh! Let's do it. As we start to play, who ruins my teaser? So, Jenks, here's how you play. I'm going to give you my three teaser legs, and you tell me who ruins my teaser now right. like i said my teaser legs were really bad last week so let's see if they're a little better this week but just know my confidence is not super high when it comes to these games all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the kansas city chiefs the line is eight against the broncos we're gonna get it down to chiefs minus two on the road at the broncos Next up, we're taking the Ravens, minus two and a half. This is teased down from Ravens, minus eight and a half, on the road at the Cardinals. And then the tricky one. This is one that I think maybe ruins it. The Steelers are getting two and a half at home against the Jags. We know all the trends for Mike Tomlin as a home underdog. They're coming off a bye. You get Mm -hmm. the Steelers up to plus eight and a half at home over the Jaguars. So now the million dollar question, Jenks, who ruins my teaser? The Steelers. Yeah. Now, do I like your <laughs> teaser? Yes, but you knew that was coming. It's not like that's coming out mm-hmm. of nowhere. I just never know what to get from the Steelers. I, I will say Mike Tomlin, again, doing a great job. This is a patchwork <laughs> He's team. He's doing way. a great yeah. job. I, I, he, he, if you look at the talent that they have, like, I don't know how they're doing it. They're, th- this does not strike me as a really good football team. And yet, here they no. are winning games. So, I I love Tomlin as a home dog. But also, I do think Jacksonville is a team that, if they put it together, can be, and, and I, I believe is one of the better teams in the football, in the football league, the National Football League. So, I, I <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big, I like the basketball league. I like the football league. I like the <laughs> hockey league. I'm a big league guy, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so definitely follow all of my advice. I think the Jags are the one that can ruin that. <laughs> that sounds like somebody who doesn't watch sports that tries I to totally. act like they watch sports. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the league. Mm, Which one? Yeah. I don't know. You know, the all league. Of them. The one that they're – yeah, all of the leagues. All- like, you need a shirt that says fan of the league, kind of like yes. that Rob Lowe hat that has just – you know, the NFL logo on it. But what about the two favorites? Normally, I'm not somebody who throws favorites in there. I usually like teasing underdogs. But the Chiefs lying two at home, or excuse me, on the road at the Broncos. We know the Mile High City is a tough place to play. The Broncos at least, you know, won a game last week, I believe. Do you think this could be cause for concern? Uh, Maybe. I mean, you get me with these teasers. I don't know. So give me your three teams again. I want to make sure I get this right. You got Broncos, or you're fading the Broncos. So you got Chiefs minus one. You this have... one's down. Yeah, because I it? got it last night at eight and a half. Uh, so I teased it down to two and a half. Now it's Chiefs merely laying a point and a half on the road at the Broncos. Because I know the Chiefs play in a lot of close games, but they have absolutely owned the Broncos. I think that goes into the handicap. It's like this has been the team where they've really had their number. 